Hello. Today I will be looking at the Super Tacomar 50mm f1.4 lens. The first lens that I ever reviewed on this channel was the Tacomar Super Multi-Coated f1.8, I believe. That was a 55mm lens. The Tacomar Super Multi-Coated was the successor to the Super Tacomar. This one came out first. Tacomar lenses were made by the Asahi Optical Corporation, which I mispronounced in my previous video, but it's apparently Asahi, not Asahi or whatever I said before. Tacomar lenses have kind of a cult following amongst aficionados of vintage manual focus lenses. The Super Tacomar lenses were made in the 1960s, and the Tacomar Super Multicoded that I reviewed before was made in the 1970s. The quality of the photos that you get with these lenses tends to be phenomenal. The subject in the foreground tends to be very sharp, and the background tends to have a nice bokeh effect. An interesting feature of the early Tacomar lenses is they used thorium glass. This is glass with thorium in the glass, and it's not just a coating, which means the glass is slightly radioactive. Uh, it's not a whole lot. It's kind of like the old watches that you used to get that had the numbers and the hands that were glow in the dark. But a disadvantage to the thorium glass is that they tend to turn yellow over time. You can correct this by applying UV light to the lens for a long period of time. You can see here I have an AnyCubic wash and cure station. This is for curing 3D resin prints, but it does it by shining UV light on the model, so I thought I'd give this a try. You can also just leave it out in the sun for a long period of time, like a week or two. If you use any of these techniques though, be sure that you stop the lens down all the way and put something behind it so that it's not focusing on anything that could catch fire because shining light through glass can be a problem. You can also adjust the color temperature in Lightroom. That will take care of the yellowing, but you do lose about a stop or two of light just due to the fact that the glass is yellow. It's a bit like having a, a yellow filter over your lens. The Super Tacomar came in two versions. There was a version that was only made for two years between 1962 and 1964 that had eight elements in six groups. This one came out just after that. This has seven elements in six groups. The eight element version is popular because the background bokeh is smoother and also just because it's rare. You can find the eight element versions on eBay usually for about $300, whereas this seven element version was $40 to $50 on eBay. A good way to spot the eight element version is to look for this little red line right next to the four. On the seven element version, it will be to the left of the four, and on an eight element version, it will be to the right of the four. And in fact, really old eight element versions will have an R underneath the line. This lens has an M42 screw mount, which means that you can go out and buy an adapter for any camera that you want to put it on. And this adapter will go on my Sony mirrorless camera but you can buy them for Canon or Nikon or whatever you want. The focus ring is nice and smooth and goes for a little more than half of a turn. The aperture has six blades and goes from f1.4 to f16 in half stop increments. This one is really hard to turn. I suspect that there's just something about this particular one that makes it hard to turn. I'm always afraid I'm going to actually unscrew it from the camera body since it is a screw mount, but it seems to work okay. If we look at the focus charts, we can see that they're kind of yellow because the lens itself has some yellowing to it. But even at f1.4, it's still pretty sharp in the center. The corners are not quite as sharp, but they're still pretty good for f1.4. At f8, the focus is even better in the center, and it's pretty good even in the corners. If we look at the distortion chart, you can see that I've adjusted the color temperature on this in Lightroom to account for the yellowing. There is a bit of barrel distortion here, but it's not much and it's easily correctable in Lightroom. Last week's video was me going out and taking photos with this lens, and I got a picture of these hands. These were part of a citywide art project a few years ago. Several artists were given these fiberglass hands and everybody did something different with them, and then they were placed around the city. 
This pair is outside of what used to be a post office. I've also shown a pair that were in a cemetery that was holding a rose in another video. This other pair shown here holding a bowl with a soup spoon in it is outside of a soup kitchen. This last photo is of some daffodils growing in my backyard. This shows how well the background is blurred out when shot wide open at f1.4. You can barely tell that there's a house across the street. In conclusion, this is a great lens. The background when shot wide open has a nice quality to it. I'm planning on trying to de-yellow this one by setting it under UV lights. I realize I just showed video of that happening, but I haven't actually shot that yet. I'm planning on shooting that as soon as I'm done shooting this and let it set under those UV lights for a couple of days. I wanted to have the lens in my hand for this video, so I haven't actually done that yet. So I'll put in the description whether or not that worked. We'll see. So that is the Super Takamar 50mm f1.4 lens. If you like this video, click like, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Takamar lenses have kind of a cult following amongst aficionados of vintage multifocus lenses. Multifocus? So that is the Super Takamar 50mm f1.2 lens. f1.2?